cancer touches everyone, but the biggest part is the fight. The fight to get better, the fight to stay with your family, and the fight to feel good. And that's what tonight's about. So tonight, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the journey, let's celebrate the fight, and let's celebrate the support. Mary Bird Perkins, Terrebonne General, we've all been here to make sure that we're part of this community. Cancer does touch our community and all the other communities, and we'll always be here to provide care to assure that you have something close to home. But more, I guess more important tonight, we want to hear from our survivor and our guest speaker, Ms. Christy Colley. She's a breast cancer survivor. We're extraordinarily proud. She got uh, diagnosed with breast cancer in July of 2022. She got care at our facility, Terrebonne General Mary Bird Perkins, and she wants to tell you about her journey. But most of all, what I want to tell you is she's never really public, did public speaking before. Please make her feel comfortable. She's extraordinarily nervous. Give her a big round of applause and make her feel supported. All right. Good evening, and thank you for having me here tonight. As you know, I am a wife and mother. What you do not know is that I'm also one in eight. One in eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. I am one of seven, one of the seven members of my family to have had cancer. And lastly, I am one of three, one of the three survivors in my family. You see, my family was first affected by cancer in 1992 when my dad's sister was diagnosed with throat and lung cancer and passed away two years later. Throughout the years, my maternal grandmother battled cancer on two separate occasions first with colon cancer, and then again with kidney cancer. My mom's brother suffered with lung and brain cancer, and my father's brother, my godfather, passed away four short months after finding out that he had stomach cancer. The survivors beside myself are my mother's sister who has stage four liver cancer, and my nephew who was born with a neuroblastoma on his tailbone. Happy to say that he'll be turning nine at the end of April, very happy and healthy. <laughs> My journey began in June of last year. I had just had hand surgery when I believe Mocha, my little wonder pup, discovered my lump. As she jumped to sit on me, I moved my hand as to not get hit, and she landed on my chest with her two front paws. After that, she continued to swat at my left breast, and which, which was tender and slightly bruised, when I felt the lump. I mentioned my findings to the tech when I went for my already scheduled routine mammogram. And the tech uh, felt the lump and immediately told me I needed a diagnostic mammogram and an ultrasound. We got new orders and rescheduled for the following week, which was the Monday after Father's Day. As luck would have it, I got sick that weekend. And for the first time in two and a half years, I tested positive for COVID on Father's Day. I called the breast center and had to wait two more weeks for my new appointment. As the time passed, I began to get really concerned because the lump was still there and my mammogram couldn't come fast enough. That day finally came and the next day I got the call that I indeed needed a biopsy which was scheduled for the following week. Knowing the family history of cancer we had, that week was torturous. The day after the biopsy, Dr. Schwab called and the minute I heard his voice, I knew. I was diagnosed with grade two invasive ductal carcinoma HER2 POSITIVE ON JULY 19TH, 2022. THE NEXT FEW WEEKS WERE A BLUR OF APPOINTMENTS AND LOTS OF RESEARCHING AND GOOGLE WAS NOT MY FRIEND. DR. SCHWAB CONNECTED ME WITH DR. JEFF Rao, THE GURU OF PLASTIC SURGERY AS HE REFERS TO HIM, AND MY PLAN WAS IN PLACE. ON AUGUST 16TH, I HAD A BILATERAL mastectomy WITH IMMEDIATE DEEP FLAP RECONSTRUCTION, AND THAT IN ITSELF WAS AN ADVENTURE when I discovered I was allergic to the surgical tape and had to have part of my incisions open and allowed to heal from the inside out. In October, I was finally healed enough to get my port, and on October 27th, I had the first of my six rounds of chemo. When I was diagnosed, I knew there was nowhere else I'd want to go than Terrebonne General and Mary Bird Perkins. It's because of Mary Bird Perkins that my Aunt Joy, my mom's sister, is still with us today. From my first appointments with Dr. Ming and Taylor, I was treated with such compassion, not only by her, but by the nurses and staff. 
When faced with something like cancer, being treated like family means so much. TGMC and Mary Bird Perkins doesn't just treat the disease, but they, per they treat the person as well. They have gone above and beyond at every single visit and treatment I've had. Halfway through chemo, I was so ready to give up, but they encouraged me on. The night before treatment, I wouldn't sleep because I dreaded going. But once I was there, I was filled with a sense of calmness and security. On February 9th, I was able to ring that bell. And even though I was feeling terrible, I needed to celebrate with my Mary Bird Perkins family. I managed to get Megan, Marissa, Jamie, Allison, and Hannah to round up a few more people and make a TikTok, which Amy was ecstatic for. Yes, old people make TikToks, cringy I know, but it does have 5,000 views on it. My husband and I were talking one night and I said to him, you know, I may be cancer free, but I'll never be free from cancer. From the time of your diagnosis, your whole life changes. Everything you wear, the clothes you eat, I'm sorry, everything you eat, the products you use, the things you do, even the clothes you wear, nothing is the same. You are always in the shadows of the big C word, but at the same time, you are brought into a new light. You appreciate time, even with the little moments and people, a little bit more. My journey is not over, and I definitely know I could not have come this far without my amazing support system and family. My husband, Corey, my daughter, Elaine, and her boyfriend, Logan, and my mom and dad, Chris and Yvette, and I can't forget my Mary Bird Perkins family. There will never be enough thank yous in this lifetime for all who have played a part in my story. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. I take pride in myself in finding silver linings. With that said, I can honestly say that on March 18th, I turned 50 with not a single gray hair on my head. <laughs>
Luminara ceremony is an opportunity for us to come together and remember why we are here at Relay. Each one represents a treasured relationship. They represent people, and each has a name and a story to tell. They are our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our sons, our daughters, our friends, and our loved ones. As they glow through the night, they represent our shared vision for a cancer-free future. We love the, the people these luminarias represent, and we remember them, celebrate them, and fight back against the disease for them. We call your attention to the small table that occupies a place of dignity and honor. It is set for one symbolizing the fact that some of our loved ones are missing from this gathering. They have been diagnosed with cancer and there are some of the names and faces behind the luminarias. The chair is empty. Many of those who fought the battle with cancer are no longer with us, but rather than mourning their loss, we choose to celebrate their life. These people are unable to be with their loved ones and families now. So let us join together to recognize and honor them and to bear witness to their struggle and their memory. The table is small, symbolizing the frailty of a single patient, sometimes alone in the fight against his or her disease. The tablecloth is white, symbolic of the medical profession, doctors, nurses, and researchers who help fight the battle for life. The single rose in the vase signifies the enduring love of their families and friends and the strength of the patients who will fight the disease that ultimately claimed many of them. The ribbon on the vase represents the ribbons worn on the lapels of millions who support a continued research for cures for all forms of cancer, cancers that are claiming the lives of 609,360 people in the U.S. this year. The slice of lemon on the plate reminds us of the bitter battle against the deadly disease, a battle fought by an estimated 1,958,310 new cancer cases in the U.S. in 2023. The salt sprinkle in the plate reminds us of the countless tears of personal anguish shed by the patient and those shed by family members and friends who have lost a loved one. The glass is inverted in the memory of those people who are not here to join our celebration of successes. But the candle represents the light of hope that lives in the heart of all of us, hope represented by cancer survivors, and the hope for a cure discovered as a result of the detailed work of the medical profession made able through the funds generated through events such as the Relay for Life.